Lucky, Big Frank, Vinny the Chin, all were bosses of the notorious Genovese family, often referred to as the Rolls Royce of organized crime. Last December, 73 men connected with the Genovese family were arrested and charged with extortion and loan sharking. To the FBI, it was one more blow against the nation's most secretive crime family. But prosecutors warn that even if the Genovese family is momentarily on the ropes, it is still a powerful presence in the underworld, as it has been for nearly a century. The Genovese crime family is widely known within law enforcement as the Ivy League of the underworld, the family that gets it right. Lucky Luciano was the guy who really made the mob what it is today. Luciano was the boss. Vito Genovese was the power. Genovese was violent. He liked to have bodies in the street. He liked to have people thrown through windows and off roofs and knocked off. Frank Costello was the gambling czar of this country. Costello owned the judges. No judge in New York City was appointed without Costello saying okay. You have these two Vincent Gigantes. During the day, he was a disheveled person, disoriented, mumbling. But in the evening, he would get in a limousine with the, a driver, and they would take him up to the swanky midtown townhouse. This is the largest of the five New York organized crime families. It has hundreds of members, and it is extraordinarily powerful. Of all the legendary names in the history of the New York Mafia, including Gambino, Bonanno, Colombo, and Lucchese, one stands apart, Genovese. Even today, after government crackdowns and infighting have ended the mob's golden era, the Genovese family is down but not out. It continues to make millions every year through rackets ranging from labor corruption to extortion, to drug trafficking. Make no mistake about it. This is not a script for The Sopranos. This is the real thing. In April 2001, the FBI rounded up 45 reputed gangsters and associates, wise guys with names like Sammy Meatballs and Frank the Fish. The arrests were made with the help of an informant inside the Genovese crime family. The men who created the family would never have tolerated such disloyalty in their ranks. But of course, they came from another world. In the 1890s, three boys were born into three southern Italian families. These families didn't know one another, but they shared a common dream, making a better life for themselves in the new world. In time, the three boys would find each other on the bustling streets of New York City. Together, they would create their own dark version of the American dream, reshaping the criminal underworld in their own images. The first of these three boys was Charles Lucky Luciano, born Salvatore Lucania on November 24, 1897, in the Sicilian town of Lercara Fridi. He was the oldest of Antonio and Rosalia Lucania's four children. Salvatore's father, a sulfur miner, brought his family to New York in 1906. They moved into a Jewish section of Manhattan's Lower East Side. But the promise of a better life in America still seemed beyond young Salvatore's grasp. People like Luciano used to look around and think, this is not a future I want. Because wherever you look, were men with large families working 12 hours a day, six days a week, for 50 cents a day. Luciano didn't want to work with a pick and shovel. He said there are other ways to make money uh, without working hard if you use your wits. And that's what he decided to do. In 1910, Salvatore dropped out of school to work as a delivery boy for a hat maker. Someone induced him into becoming a messenger and carrying drugs, and he used to put the heroin in the hat boxes 
and then walk around that way. He heard the lure of the street at a very early age, at least by the age of 14. He, by then, had committed to a criminal life. He was out there doing small-time crimes, smoking opium, having a sex life of sorts. His mother was openly ashamed of him, and he began to call himself Charles Luciano instead of Salvador Lucania, and it was a way of somehow removing the stain uh, from the family. At the age of 18, Luciano was arrested for possession of heroin and sentenced to a year in prison. His parents did not visit him in jail. Charlie Luciano's father turned his back on him and disowned him and said, I, I cannot have a son. I don't want to have a son like you. So as far as I'm concerned, you're not my son anymore. Luciano soon started his own gang and recruited other young hoods from around East Harlem, including one named Frank Costello. Born Francesco Castiglia in the town of Loropoli on January 26, 1891, Costello was the youngest of Luigi and Maria Castiglia's six children. At the age of four, he and his family boarded a crowded passenger ship bound for America. Space was so tight on board that young Francesco spent most of the voyage inside a large cooking pot. His family settled in East Harlem, a neighborhood teeming with poor Italian immigrants. They opened a little grocery store in East Harlem, but they had great difficulty making it. His father was ineffectual. He really hated his father. Instead of his father, young Francesco came to admire the well-dressed men he saw on the street. Men from the old country who had brought with them the traditions of organized crime, secrecy, loyalty, and respect. If you looked around, there was a certain class of guy who didn't really go to work, but always had nice clothes, who didn't really come from any particular place of power from the government or a company, yet seemed to command respect. And those were the men of La Cosa Nostra, the made guys. Francesco dropped out of school when he was 13 to join a street gang. To sound less Italian, he changed his name to Frank Costello. At 17, Frank had his first brush with the law. He was arrested in the Bronx for assault and robbery. The charges were dismissed. You could see that he was a very solid, tough kid. And there really was no marked difference between uh, uh, the man who became known as the Prime Minister of the Underworld and the uh, others uh, at that time of his life. He was just another hoodlum kid. In the fall of 1914, at the age of 23, Costello married a vivacious 15-year-old Jewish girl named Loretta Geigerman. A few months later, Frank was arrested for possession of a handgun. He was sentenced to a year in prison. After that, I don't think Frank Costello personally uh, ever carried a gun again. Uh, he decided to get ahead by using his head instead of violence. 